After several days of media reports of alleged corruption at the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, it was time for the petitioner to make his case before the Senate Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petition. A case of over one trillion naira allegedly diverted by the Anti-Graft Commission. The petitioner, George Ubo, outlined his case. EFCC doctors and manipulates bank accounts to conceal diversion of funds. Three, EFCC releases recovered funds to unidentified persons and EFCC officials. Over 95% of EFCC's recoveries in foreign currencies, other than those from multinational companies, have been diverted. He also alleged that the anti-graft agency admitted to under-reporting monies recovered from former governor of Bielsa State, Deprié Alemesia. As at uh, the 30th of October 2013, EFCC is still keeping back the sum of 1.6 billion naira that belongs to the Bielsa State government. This amount is part of the 3.2 billion talked away by EFCC in a fixed deposit account with Access Bank CSBC. Uh, sorry, CSBC. Six, sorry. See, has been six years. So I approached DSP Alamesia and I showed him this evidence. And uh, DSP said, Yes, you are right. Everything they took from me never, were never accounted for. But who am I to say anything? Everybody already, you know, brands me as a, a thief. And uh, I went to the state government. I disclosed the same to them. They, were, they said, the amount you have they sent to us is exactly what we received. I said, now you have a refund, $1.4 billion and $1.3 million. They said, what do we do? I said, give me a letter of mandate. So there's a letter from the ISA state to me. That is a mandate letter written to me to collect this, uh, these monies. So based on the mandate, I formally wrote EFCC. Now, everything transpired in 2013. So anybody that is saying that this is a new thing is, is lying. The chairman of the Senate committee read out a letter from the anti-graft agency asking for another date to appear before the committee. You are kindly invited to that note that the commission has since May 2014 commissioned KPGM to carry out an independent and thorough audit of same from the inception of the commission to date in all six geopolitical zones of the federation where we have our offices we shall submit the report to the national assembly as part of our annual report and to the committee in particular in about three weeks when we must have finished the consultation with the audit firm an official of the anti-graft agency who was present at the event however questioned the procedure adopted by the committee i really want to be enlightened with utmost respect I don't know the procedure of the committee. I, I don't know. I would like to know how the propriety of hearing a petitioner in our absence when he's making his presentation, referring to documents, making a rather document which we are not even present to address. I don't okay, just okay, just one. Okay. Sorry. We are here today to listen to the petitioner, draw evidence from his presentation, and then invite you in, uh, at a later date and also listening to you and draw um, information from your presentation, then we will bring, if there's need, we will bring both of you together. But when the official continued with more comments, the committee took a stand. Uh, with due respect, please, um, we will want you to excuse us, just like uh, my colleagues have said. We'll, we'll have a time when we'll invite you. <laughs> The meeting came to a close a few minutes later. The Senate committee has completed the first phase of this hearing. It says it will now sit down and decide when it will hear from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission before taking a decision on this petition. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News.